Hi, I'm Andrew Hayford with Different Stream, and in just a moment, I'm going to talk to you about something super important, and that's the Thrift Savings Plan. Stay tuned. How are you doing? So we're going to talk about the Thrift Savings Plan. Now, the training I'm going to give today is just bare minimum basic, what you need to know about the Thrift Savings Plan. So first of all, who does this training apply to? This training applies to anyone who has a thrift savings plan or anyone that knows someone who has a thrift savings plan. So the thrift savings plan is for federal employees, and that'd be people like postal workers, civil service, and members of the uniformed services, and that is all branches. So what the thrift savings plan is, is a retirement account. That's it. Now, most people signed up for it because their superior told them that it'd be a good idea and like, all right, cool. It would be a good idea. So then they just say, hey, they allocate the minimum amount. But what happens is they really don't know where the money is going, how it's working, what it's doing for them, and just sitting there and they just don't know. So that's what we're going to do for today's training. So first of all, we have two types of contributions. You're going to have your regular and you're going to have your catch-up. And catch-up is for ages 50 and up. And then there's two different categories that you can put it in. You have your traditional TSP, which is actually the only one you had an option for up until recently. And then now you have your Roth TSP. So May 2012, they decided, do you know what? We have the TSP, and now we need to do a Roth TSP. And that was the best decision they could have ever done. So the difference between the two is your traditional is going to be your pre-tax. And then your Roth IRA is post-tax. And this is pre or post tax money going into it. Now, the cool thing about the Roth is normal people have access to the Roth IRA. And you can put $5,500 per year into it. Unless your age is 50 and up, doing your catch up, then it'll be $6,500 per year. So the unfair advantage that the military has is you can put $17,500 per year. And if that didn't quite sink in, let me say it again 17000 500 per year. That is an unfair advantage. Now, the chances are most people really cannot put in 17,500 per year. But the cool thing is, is if you're young, you start out, you just build that muscle, put a little bit in, and each year just building and growing up on that muscle and putting more and more and more each year. And even if you put 5,600 per year, that'd be $100 more than normal people can put in. That itself is the unfair advantage. Now, why is it an unfair advantage? Well, what I want to talk to you about is your different IRS tax codes. No matter what account you have, it's going to fit in one of these three different tax codes. So your far left, your taxable. This is going to be your wages. This is going to be money you have in your bank account, certificates of deposit, money market account, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. And what that means is as your account grows, you're going to get taxed proportionally. So makes sense. Now, most retirement accounts fall into the tax deferred. This is our middle or a blue zone if you're following the colors. Now, what, what these are are your 401ks, your 403bs, your traditional IRA, your traditional TSP. And what that means is the money you contribute is tax or is not tax at all. It's tax free. And it grows and grows and it grows tax free. And then when you finally need it the most, and it's the biggest it can absolutely possibly be, and it's when you absolutely need it, that's when you get taxed. And you get taxed as ordinary income. So if you want to pull out 100000 per year, well, for you to actually see 100000 per year, you're going to have to pull out more because it's taxed as ordinary income. And it can get thrown into a higher tax bracket, which is exactly what you want in your retirement age, right? Wrong. So the far right is incredible now the different funds that go on the far right this is your tax exempt zone and this would be your Roth IRA your Roth TSP then also something that people don't even really know about which is your index universal life and what that is is cash accumulation inside of life insurance but right now we're here to talk about this thing called the Roth TSP so what it means is you're taxed already on the money so you're taking post-tax money and you're contributing it towards your retirement. And since you're already taxed, it's going to grow tax-free. It's going to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. And guess what? When you pull it out, it's tax-free. 
And another thing to contribute between the two of those is on the if you have a tax deferred, when you pull out, you have to pull out a certain amount because the government wants their taxes. So what do you think is going to happen to taxes? Do you think they can go up or do you think they're going to go down? And another thing to throw at you is let's say you're a farmer. If you're a farmer, would you get rather want to get taxed on the seeds or the harvest? I personally, I would rather get taxed on the seeds. So enough about that. Let's talk about your different options. So within the TSP, there's many different places you can put your money, which is incredible because life is about options. Now, we're going to talk about these funds in great detail. Well, one thing I want you to know is the G fund is where your money is automatically going to go, period. And then you have to physically move it around depending on where you want it. So the first option we're going to talk about is our L funds. And this is our life cycle funds. Now, the cool thing about this is you're going to pick a target range. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically invest and change the investments as your, as your time progresses. And so what I mean by that is in the beginning when you have time, it's going to be nice and aggressive because you can actually afford to take some losses. And then once you get closer and closer and closer to your target range, well, that's when it's going to get nice and secure. So who, is, who are these funds designed for? They're designed for people who don't have the time, experience, or interest to personally manage their funds. And the great thing about TSP is you can, you can actually design it like the life cycle. You can say you want X amount percent to go towards whatever or the individual funds every single month. Or you can just do the life cycle and let them do all the guessing for you. Now, if you want to be in control of your destiny, well, that's where the rest of the funds come into play. So the G fund. Once again, this is where your money is going to go on default. Now, the cool thing about the G fund is it's strictly for people with the TSP, period. Now, what it is is it's bonds. It's bonds within government securities, and more importantly, it's within treasury securities. Now, its object is, is to produce a rate of return that's higher than inflation while avoiding exposure to credit default risk and market price fluctuations. So what this is going to do is it's, it's supposed to get you a little bit of money at a time. It's the slow and steady ones the race effect. Only problem is inflation has been beating it up the last couple of years. Bonds are not what they used to be. And that's not bad at all. It's just it is what it is. So what the G fund has done lately last year is 1.6%. Now inflation is roughly around 4%. And so what I mean by inflation is let's say you put $10,000 in the bank account 10 years ago. Well, the inflation is working towards it. Now you're probably thinking, hey, I still have $10,000 in my bank account. But the thing is, is it does not have the buying power it did 10 years ago. So the G fund is incredibly secure, but it's just not going to give you high rate of returns. And so if you're hoping for your TSP to give you high rate of returns and you just never looked at it and just put lots of money into it, well, guess what? That's why we need to look into it and find out where your money is going. And you can put it wherever you want. So let's, have, let's look at some other fund options. We're going to look at the F fund. Now the F fund, it's still within bonds, but it follows the Barclays Capital U.S. Aggregate Bond Index. And what that is is an index that includes U.S. government, mortgage-backed, corporate, and foreign government sectors within the bond market. And so because it follows different stuff, it's going to have different risks. Now, it is a passively managed fund that mirrors the performance of the Barclays Index. And so with that being said, whether the market is up or down, it doesn't matter. It's going to truck. It's going to do its course. So the risk is going to be inflation because that's going to affect all the funds. You're also going to have market risk. And you're going to have prepayment and credit risk. And so what your prepayment risk is is it's a risk associated with the mortgage-backed securities because it follows mortgage-backed bonds. And then also your prepayment risk, or we just covered that, your credit risk is risk that borrowers would default on scheduled payments. Now we're going to talk about the more fun funds. Now the C, the S, and the I funds follow the stock market. And so your C fund is going to follow your S&P 500, which is your standards and poor's 500. And that's 500 medium to large size U.S. companies. 
Now, once again, this is a passively managed fund, and whether the market's going up or it's going down, it doesn't matter. It's going to track its course. So with that being said, our risk is going to be inflation, and it's going to be market. Now, the S fund is similar but slightly different. Reason being is this one's going to follow the Dow Jones U.S. Completion Total Stock Market Index. Now, the Dow Jones, all it is is it is an index of stocks that's not included on the S&P 500. So once again, this can be a passively managed fund, and your risk that are going to be social are going to be inflation and market, market fluctuation. Because no matter how the market's doing, it's going to keep trucking its course and following that index. And then the final one is a kind of interesting one, and this is our I fund. What makes it interesting is this is our international fund. Now it stocks and match the Morgan Stanley Capital International AEFE index. And that's your Europe, Australia, and Far East index. And so, same thing, it's going to, it's passively managed. So it's just going to do its thing and it's going to track its course. Now, a risk, you're going to have one interesting risk that's different than the other two. So you're still going to have your inflation, you're going to have your market risk, but now we're going to have currency risk. Because since we're dealing with international funds, well, now we need to make sure that currency lines up. And that's a different thing to throw into it, which doesn't make it bad, it just makes it more fun. So now that we talked about what the different funds are, if you want to do your own uh, looking into it, if you want to do your own research, here's the different websites you can go to. Because there's a wonderful man that said trust but verify. So if you want to actually see what the C fund is doing, all you have to do is go to Standard Poor's. So I hope you got a lot of great value out of this. Now, what is the next step? We got some great info, but we need to do something with it. So whether you have a TSP and you haven't looked at it in a while, or you know somebody who has a TSP, and even, let's take a step further, how about you know somebody who got out of the military and they have a TSP just in there doing absolutely nothing? Well, our next step could be let's get some help. Let's let, have somebody look at it to show you what it can be doing, show you what it looks like in a different light. And so one thing that you can do right now is go to differentstream.com slash DFIS or facebook.com slash different stream. And what we can do for you is give you a complimentary comprehensive financial analysis. And what I mean by that is we can create for you a roadmap so you can achieve your financial goals, your financial dreams, and get financial freedom. Thank you for taking the time to watch us and have a wonderful day or night.